Hi again, it's one Gary Digital Williams here on Boxing Law on the Beltway, our news and notes for this week, and uh, we have a lot to get to this week. Uh, we have a lot of recaps from a number of boxers uh, over the past week. Had, we're in action this past week and uh, had a chance to give some of the results. Actually, we kind of were iffy on this particular week, to tell you the truth. We'll get you more details on that. We also have some updates on cards that are coming up in the next few months. And we have a passing to talk about another one of our Beltway Boxing uh, luminaries passed away this past week. So we'll talk more about that all throughout this podcast. Beltway Boxing News and Notes brought to you by Real-Time Pain Relief. From boxers to ballerinas, for shoulder pain to muscle strain and everything in between, Boxing Along the Beltway recommends Real-Time Pain Relief, the natural, plant-based, safe, fast, and effective ointment. If you go to freepainoffer.com, buy $10 worth of Real-Time Pain Relief, you get a free $10 tube of real-time pain relief. Rub it on, the pain is gone in real time. And since we are recording this on the day after Thanksgiving, we hope you you and yours had a great Thanksgiving and looking forward to a wonderful holiday season. And we're going to have a good holiday season throughout the Beltway into uh, 2018, so we're going to give you some updates on that as we go along. But first, we talk about the big night of Tuesday. Uh, this past Tuesday, November 21st, which we had six Beltway boxers in action in two locations in the United States. Uh, let's first start at the Coliseum in St. Petersburg, Florida, where D.C. welterweight David Dede Grayton lost a 10-round unanimous decision to undefeated Miguel Cruz of Lake Mary, Florida. Now, this bout was nationally televised on Fox Sports 1, FS1, they call themselves now. And... Actually, I didn't think Grayton fought a bad fight that night. I really didn't. I thought he fought very well overall. Uh, got off to a really good start. He stunned Cruz in the second round uh, with a with a good good couple of shots. But uh, Cruz came back. He hurt Grayton in the third. Grayton showed his veteran expertise, and he was able to hang on and avoid being knocked down. And then he uh, then while Grayton was trying to hang on, Cruz had suffered a cut under the right eye on the third round. I wasn't sure it was a punch or an accidental headbutt. It might have been an accidental headbutt because, of course, you had the southpaw Grayton and the conventional uh, Cruz going at each other. So they probably butted, butted heads in the third round. Cruz did drop Grayton in the sixth round with a right jab, but Grayton recovered. He came back strong again. He had a pressured Cruz in the eighth round. He opened another cut. And I, this one was on over punch, I believe, over Cruz, above Cruz's right eye. So Cruz had a cut below the right eye and above the right eye. And both men were going crazy at the end of the bout. But Grayton lost. And I think deservedly so. He lost the bout by, by 96-93 score across the board. Now, Grayton is now 15-2-1, and 11 KOs. Uh, of course, his only two losses were to Brian Perella and now Miguel Cruz. And, of course, he had the draw uh, in his last outing against Kermit Cintron. But I think in all those bouts, with exception, I, I don't. he didn't look good against Perella. Perella, he never ended the bout against Perella. But against Cruz and against Cintron, I thought he looked very well. And I believe Grayton has been on national TV his last four or five bouts. So he's still viable. Um, we we got to see whether or not he has plateaued, however, whether or not he can go any further further upward in this situation. And we'll talk a lot about plateauing in the next few months uh, here in the Beltway. But uh, but right now, Grayton is 15-2-1, 11 KOs. Cruz remains undefeated, 17-0, 11 KOs for Miguel Cruz. Meanwhile, on the undercard, both the Russell brothers were victorious. Of course, out of Capitol Heights, Maryland, Antonio Russell, he knocked out Marco, Marco Antonio La Machina Mendoza Chico of uh, Mexico. He knocked him out of one. I'm sorry. He's out of. Uh, yeah, he's out of Mexico, I believe. Yeah. And he knocked him out of 115 of the first round. And Antonio Russell now 10-0, 8 KOs. Chico 11-6 and 1, 7 KOs. Meanwhile, Antoine Russell knocked out Larry Yanez in the first round. He's two, he uh, knocked him out of 221 in the first round. Russell's now 3-0, three, three KOs, all three of his KOs coming in the first round. Yanez is 4-8-2. and two. So good performances for the Russell brothers. So a 2-1 at the... Uh, at the Coliseum in St. Petersburg, Florida. Let's move now to the Sands Bethlehem Event Center in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, where Michael the Professor Fox out of Forestville, Maryland, he captured the UBF All-America's Welterweight Championship. He won an eight-round unanimous decision over Manuel Alejandro Reyes. Uh, now, Fox fighting in Welterweight for the very first time. And this is a weird card in the sense that a number of boxers came in overweight. In fact, 
the Fox bout against Reyes was actually moved up to the main event on the card because the main event, one of the boxes there came in and I, I, for the life of me, I can't understand how this happened, why this happened, or why this was even allowed to happen. But obviously it wasn't because they canceled the bout, but one of the boxes in the main, in the scheduled main event for this card, it's a King's Motions card, came in at 15 pounds over the weight. That is ridiculous. And he should really, this box, and I, I don't, I can't recall his name. It's probably good we don't even talk about his name, but whoever this guy is, he needs to be suspended for a good, good bunch of time because th- he obviously doesn't have any, any respect for his business. He obviously doesn't have any dedication to his game. And he needs to be put on the shelf for a little bit of time until he learned discipline or whether or not he wants to still do this anymore. But that's just, it's embarrassing. I hope he didn't get paid uh, for his, his efforts or lack of effort, I guess in this case, but uh, it, it was just unbelievable. He came in 15 pounds overweight for the main event. So Fox and Reyes got moved up to the, to the main event. I thought it was going to be a 10 round bout, but he moved it back to an eight round bout. But uh, Fox was able to win the bout by scores of 80, 72 on a shutout on one card, 79, 73 and 78, 74. He's undefeated still at 15 and 0, four KOs and Reyes drops to 11, four, one, five KO. So good win in his first regional belt for Michael Professor Fox. Meanwhile, on the undercard of that one, James Too Sleek Early out of Seat Pleasant, Maryland. He's a featherweight. He lost a four-round unanimous decision to Juan Sanchez of Allentown, Pennsylvania. Now, Early, apparently, it was a close bout, but Early lost by scores of 39-37 across the board. And uh, that's a tough break. Early, he's a pretty good boxer. He just, he's fought some really good boxers in his short career. He's 2-2 two and two now. And uh, Sanchez remains undefeated, 4-0-1 KO. So he's fought good people. But uh, it was uh, it, he fought tough people, and that's what's happened. Meanwhile, Ralph Alexander of Atlanta, Maryland, he lost by first round knockout. He's a heavyweight. He lost to the debuting Michael Polite Coffee of Brooklyn, New York, and Coffee stopped at Alexander. For what I heard, it was a pretty brutal stoppage at one hundred and one of the very first round. Alexander's now zero and two. Of course, he made his pro debut on the April fourteenth card at the MGM National Harbor Casino. In uh, Oxville, Maryland, where he lost by first round knockout to Hasim Rahman Jr. So those are the cards in both St. Petersburg, Florida, and in uh, in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, the Sands Bethlehem Adventures Casino. Now, this past Saturday, uh, we had a couple of results at the Claris Hotel in Atlantic City, New Jersey. A couple of a uh, couple of um, Belly boxes fought on that card. One of them was Samuel Amuoko. He lost the 10 round unanimous decision in the main event of that card uh, against Thomas Lamana. Uh, it was for a regional title. Uh, Lamana, uh, Lamana won, a t- law, won, I should say, a 10 round unanimous decision. Uh, according to result to reports, Lamana worked behind a strong jab, and Amuoko was pretty much in, on defense to bulk of the bout. Uh, Lamana. Kept up uh, work, working for him. He used a stiff jab to set up his hard body shots. And I'm Waco again. had no offense. And that's a lot of what he does lately. He's done a lot of that lately. Um, the minor won by shutout margin of 190. I'm Waco is now 23 and 17, I believe, with 16 knockouts on his. So, but he, he has been. I won't say a punching bag with feet, but he's given very little resistance to a bunch of boxers that he's fought in the last uh, few months, including a couple of beltway boxers. He's been on a couple of cards in the area. He was on the, uh, I believe, one of the cards. He might have been on the, um, he was on the May 13th card at, uh, at uh, D.C. Armory last year. And also he might have been on the Brona Theopane card on April, the either that one or the Super Midway doubleheader on April the 30th last year. Also on the card, uh, in the opening bout, uh, Willis Lockett uh, out of Tacoma Park, Maryland. He lost a he lost by fifth round by the end by the at the end of the fifth round uh, to Frederick Julian. Um, Julian's out of Brooklyn, New York. He he uh, is seven and oh five KOs. Lockett is now fifteen twenty two and six. Um, he's really had a tough time. He, he's won a couple every now and again, but. Uh, Every now and again, Lockett just faces guy. He couldn't come out for the sixth round in this particular bout. So, uh, so we had two losses there. So again, kind of an iffy week or so for Beltway boxers. Only the Fox brother, Fox um, Michael Fox, and the Russell brothers came out victorious 
on that particular week. So that was a tough week for us. So hopefully things will turn around as we head toward uh, Thursday night, November 30th, when Lamont Rose Jr. will defend his WBC Super Featherweight, Youth Fe- Super Featherweight title, Youth Silver Super Featherweight title against Ray Flash Perez. And that'll be at the MGM National Harbor Casino in Oxnard, Maryland. Hope you had a chance to, in- to listen to our interview with uh, Lamont Rose Jr. earlier this week as uh, we uh, talked about th- this event and how it feels for him to be a part of uh, a big event as the headline on that one. So the um, as we see, the cards will start at 8 p.m. Eastern time from... Um, actually, no, take it back. We will start at 6.30 p.m. No, I, I think that's wrong, too, because I think they, they want us there by 5. So I think the card is scheduled to start around 5, 5.30. We'll get, hope we pin that time down at some point. Um, they'll do the undercard on ESPN3 at 6.30 p.m. Eastern time. And then the main event and the co-feature, Lamont Rose Jr. and uh, and um, and Ray Perez. And the, uh, the co-feature of that one is uh, Michael no, Jose Lopez taking on Miguel Gonzalez. Uh, Jose Wonderboy Lopez of Carolina, Puerto Rico, 18-1-1, 13 KOs. will take on Miguel Gonzalez of Los Mochis, Sinaloa, Mexico. That's a 10-round bout for the WBO Inter- International Super Featherweight Championship. Uh, Miguel Gonzalez is 21-3, and 18 KOs. Um, so that fight will, those fights will take place at 11 p.m. Eastern time from the MGM National Harbor Casino in Upper Marlboro and, uh, Oak Oxen Hill, Maryland, excuse me. Uh, Lamont Rose Jr. of Upper Marlboro, Maryland will be in the main event of that that game. He'll be defending his WBC Youth Silver Super Featherweight Championship. Now we do know this update. Alice Rincon was scheduled to be on this card. He's the young man out of, uh, Carrollton, Texas, who is, uh, trained by the people at No Excuse by uh, Lamont Rose Jr. Uh, however, uh, Rincon, Alex Rincon will not be on the card because he recently had a bout with appendicitis and uh, he will not be able to to be on the card. So George Rincon, his brother, will be there. Uh, he's 2-0. He'll be there in a four-round welterweight class. Now, we do know that replacing Alex Rincon on the card will be Matthew Bregu out of, out of the Beltway. So he'll be on this card. Matthew Bregu, who is a former regional... Uh, Golden Gloves champion, and uh, he'll be on this card coming up on uh, Thursday, November 30th. And I hope you had a chance recently to uh, watch uh, Telemundo, uh, Telemundo, it was Telemundo, and that's where Matthew Breger had a nice piece done by my good friend Moises Linares, and uh, did a nice piece on uh, Alex Rincon, uh, Alex, I'm sorry, uh, Matthew Bregu, excuse me, uh, against Matthew Bregu on that particular card. On that particular uh, medium, uh, I believe it's still online. You may be able to see it online. So, uh, Matthew Bregu, good, good, uh, good information about Matthew Bregu on his card. Talked to his mom as well. Uh, did not. I don't think they talked to his brother Diego. Diego's still an amateur, but uh, don't think he had a, had a chance to talk to him. But Matthew Bregu was a big. Uh, had a big segment on Telemundo uh, recently, so we had a chance to watch that. Now let's turn our attention to the future, and our future looks pretty bright uh, going into 2018. And actually, the the card, the Golden Boy Promotions card at the MGM National Harbor on November 30th, looks like it's going to be the last Beltway card in the area for 2017. Uh, I don't know of anything else coming up. There is a card at the Messiah Temple in Norfolk, Virginia, that will have a couple Beltway boxes on December the 9th. But other than that, uh, we're pretty much done after November 30th. So uh, that's that's uh, kind of tough. But again, it, it does uh, give us an opportunity to really focus on the end of the year awards this year, which is good. But it is a big bout coming up on Saturday, December 16th. And this will be at the, I guess this is the Bell Center. I'm not sure. Uh, no, it isn't the Bell Center. It's the Place Bell in Laval, Quebec, Canada. And that'll feature in the co-feature on that card. Antoine Action Douglas out of Burke, Virginia, the middleweight. He'll take on Gary Spike O'Sullivan of Cork Island. That bout will be a 10-rounder for the vacant WBO Intercontinental Middleweight Championship. And the bout will be the co-feature to the WBO middleweight title bout between champion Billy Joe Saunders and challenger David Lemieux. And it will be televised live on HBO. So that's great. Douglas is 22-1-1, uh, 16 KOs. You're challenging for his sixth 
regional title. He has won the WBC Fecker Box title twice. He's won the NABA, WBO, International. That's different from the Intercontinental title. Don't ask me why, but it is. And the WBA, Federal Latin Middleweight Championship uh, in his career. Doug is coming off a fourth round TKO over Juan de Alba on July 14th in Miami, Oklahoma. So Douglas has, has has got a lot of these titles. Just matter if he can finally parlay one of these into a world championship. We'll find out. Meanwhile, Spike O'Sullivan is 26 and 2, 18 KOs, riding a four bout winning streak, including a fourth round TKO win over Nick Quigley on September 30th. That was in Boston, Massachusetts. Now, O'Sullivan's only losses have come to the current. Uh, middleweight champion uh, of WO, uh, Billy Joe Saunders, and to Chris Eubank Jr., who I think is competing for a world title, I think it's super middleweight, in February of next year. So, um, so Sullivan is no joke. O'Sullivan is no joke. No question about that. So, this is going to be a great bout. Uh, and again, if Douglas wants to go to that next level, that ultimate level where he's, he's challenging for a world title, Gary Spike O'Sullivan is someone he has to beat. He had an opportunity to do that on Saturday, December 16th. Once again, that'll be in Quebec, Canada, and it'll be the co-feature to Billy Joe Saunders defending his uh, his uh, WBO middleweight championship against challenger David Lemieux. That should be a good fight, too, because I tell you, I'm not a big Billy Joe Saunders fan, in all honesty. I am a big David Lemieux fan. I expect that, especially in Lemieux's home home area. He's, he's a, he's a uh, big-time boxer in Canada. And I would not be surprised if Lemieux wins that bout against Saunders. I'm not a huge Saunders fan. So I could easily see David Lemieux winning that title on that card. So that should be a great bout coming up once again, Saturday, December 16th, from the Place, Place Belle in Laval, Quebec, Canada. And once again, it'll be on HBO. Now feature Antoine Douglas taking on Gary Spike O'Sullivan. And of course, as we move into, into January, two. Uh, big, and I would say close to huge bouts. One of them is a huge bout, uh, definitely. The other one is pretty big, too. I mean, there's no question, but both of them are really big bouts. Uh, coming up in the first two weeks, of first three weeks of January. Of course, Friday, January the 12th at the Turning Stone Resort and Casino in Verona, New York. Uh, Tori Shonuff Nelson will take on, she is the mandatory challenger in the IBF. Will take on the IBF champion, Clarissa T-Rex Shields, and that'll be for the uh, IBF Super Middleweight Championship coming up on Friday, January 12th from the Turning Stone Casino and Resort in uh, Verona, New York. And that'll be shown on Showbox in the main event of Showbox. Uh, and that should be a great one. No question about that. Uh, Tori Shonuff Nelson is, is 17-0-3 with two KOs. And as I said, they talk about her big wins over Mia St. John and Alicia Napoleon. Um, and of course, Shields is four and oh, two KO. One of those wins came up against uh, Franchon Cruz Desern in her pro debut. So, uh, that should be very interesting to see what happens. So, that's gonna be a great bout, no question about that. Looking forward to that one. Now, the other bout has moved back a week. Uh, we originally thought it was gonna be on January 13th, so we we're hoping that that the Nelson Peters that Nelson and Lamont Peterson bouts will be on that same weekend, but they've moved the Lamont Peterson. Errol Spence bout, Lamont Peterson challenging Errol Spence for the IBF welterweight championship. And they moved it back to Saturday, January the 20th. And that'll be at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York. Of course, that bout will also be on Showtime. So once again, IBF uh, welterweight world champion Errol the Truth Spence uh, takes on Lamont Peterson, former two division world champion Lamont Peterson, uh, three three belt two division world champion and that'll be on saturday january the 20th and i'm going to be live on showtime from the barclays center in brooklyn new york now i've told, been told there's going to be a bus trip there going up to that bout so um we will uh see what happens there of course uh, errol spence is 22 and 0 19 ko's he traveled to england looked fantastic in dethroning kel brook for the uh, for the IBF championship and one of the best fights of 2017. That was a great fight. No question about that. Uh, uh, that bout uh, ended when uh, Brooks uh, orbital bone was fractured in the 11th, near the 11th, by the time the 11th round take took on, took place. The, the eye that uh, Brooke had, had was, was now in no use. It was, it was horrible. And it's about what stopped the 11th 
round. So it was a great, great bout. No question about that. Peterson, 35, three and one, 17 KOs, has not fought uh, in quite some time. Um, he's been now more than a year, and that's going to be a big one. There. He's 33 years old now. Uh, he has fought on, uh, actually, fought, not, not, hey, but last fight was on February the 18th, and that was when he fought the David Ivan Eason. But uh, he's won four of his last five, five bouts, and uh, we'll see. Should be should be a good one, no question about that. And it should be a great fight, and we'll talk more about that as we get closer and closer to um, Jane, both of those bouts, January the 12th and January the 20th. So we'll see what happens there. So it's a great one. Now we end with some sad news today. Um, really nice guy. I had a chance to, to get to know him a little bit and, and – uh, didn't know him as well as you wanted to because he really was kind of in the background primarily in, in bouts in the Maryland, in Maryland area. But a lot of people from whether you were involved in boxing, professional wrestling or mixed martial arts got to know this man. His name was Dave Arbogast and uh, Dave Arbogast passed away back on November 21st on uh, Tuesday, November 21st. And he was just 53 years old. And that that's just sad in and of itself. I mean, he passed at such a young age and a lot of a lot of energy and a lot of, a lot of things still to go with him. Uh, he was, a, as we said, a familiar face to many boxers and cornermen uh, as he helped complete the required paperwork at boxing weigh-ins throughout uh, the state of Maryland. Arbogast, uh, Dave Arbogast worked at the Maryland Commission for the past four years. He worked a number of pro wrestling bouts and mixed martial arts shows. And I know people from that era uh, really uh, miss him as well. I know people like John R- John Rallo, who does the Shogun fights in Maryland. And, of course, my buddy Stan Chung, who was a big wrestling fan as well. as an, He's another inspector in the uh, – in the commission and also does a lot of professional wrestling bouts uh, in the area. I would just really liked him. He was a good person. He really was a very nice person. So sad to see this one. David Arbogast passing away at the age of 53. Now his services have been announced. And and, and these are the services uh, for Dave Arbogast. The memorial service on Sunday, November 26th. A Sunday, November 26th, from 2 to 4 and from 7 to 9. So we'll be awake that day, Sunday, November 26th, 2 to 4 and 7 to 9. And it'll be at the Evans Funeral Chapel. And that's located at 16 924 York Road in Moncton, Maryland. Once again, the Evans Funeral Chapel, located at 16 924 York Road. York Road, Y O R K, York Road in Moncton, Maryland. And the funeral will be held on Monday, November 27th, same location, beginning at 11 a.m. But once again, the uh, memorial uh, wake is 2 to 4, the viewing is 2 to 4, and from 7 to 9. Once again, the Evans Funeral Chapel, 16 924 York Road. In Moncton, Maryland. Now, memorial contributions in Mr. Arbogast's name can be sent to paypal.me. Uh, backslash remembering D Arbogast. So you want to give some uh, donations to that as well in Mr. Arbogast's name. Dave was a nice guy. He really was a really good person. And uh, again, it's been a tough year, tough year for, for us. I mean, again, I don't want to go over the, the list again, but uh, we lost some really good people in this area this year and uh, in the world of boxing in general, but definitely in this, in the Beltway area. So it's, Hold on to your loved ones and just tell everybody you love them as you go go through life. No question about that. So that'll do it here for another edition of Beltway Boxing News and Notes. Once again, we're brought to you by Real-Time Pain Relief. You go to freepainoffer.com, buy $10 worth of Real-Time Pain Relief. You get a free $10 tube of Real-Time Pain Relief. <clears throat> Excuse me. Rub it on. The pain is gone in real time. Hope to see you this Thursday night at the MGM National Harbor Casino in uh, Ox Hill, Maryland. We have any updates on that card. We'll hope to give you the full card sometime within the next 48 hours or so. Hopefully, I uh, will give you the full card um, for the uh, Golden Boy Promotions card at the MGM National Harbor Casino in Ox Hill, Maryland. And, of course, we'll be doing Juan Marsh and I'll be doing some podcasting from that card, give you some updates on, uh, but of course, a lot of the bouts can be seen on ESPN3. So if you get a chance to uh, check out ESPN3 on Thursday night, you'll be able to see all the bouts. And then on the ESPN2, uh, oh, I'm sorry, ESPN, excuse me, I believe it's ESPN. Let me just double check that real quick before we go. Um, let me double check. Uh, uh, 
it will be ESPN two. Excuse me, ESPN two will air the fight. I think I've been saying ESPN, but it will be on ESPN two at eleven p.m. So ESPN two will carry the main bouts. ESPN three, also ESPN Deportes will. Uh, ESPN three will do the uh, undercard at six thirty p.m. ESPN three and ESPN Deportes will do the fights at eight p.m. And then ESPN two handles the. Um, Main event at 11 p.m. Eastern time. So look forward to seeing you. Hope you'll be there because I heard, I heard tickets are going pretty well. So it could be a sellout on that night. So hopefully that'll be the case. So look forward to seeing you here at the MGM National Harbor on Thursday, November 30th. Until then, I'm Gary Digital William. Thanks for joining me, everybody. And always remember to keep supporting the best boxing in the world, the boxing along the Beltway. Thanks for listening. Take care.